there, Paul Mackey here with One Idiot's Thoughts on Season 1, Episode 8 of The Rockford Files. This past weekend was the Lake Superior Harvest Festival at Lakefront Festival Park here in Duluth. It's fall festival season officially. The previous weekend was the Minnesota State Fair for us down in St. Paul, and that's marketed as the best 12 days of summer. And that sure felt accurate, especially the summer part. This weekend was a fall festival, with plenty of harvested goods, food stands, and electric cars. Well, the whole festival was presented by Equilibrium 3, a nonprofit focused on community equity and sustainability, so the electric cars made perfect sense. I've got plenty of autumnally festive weekends coming up, and I'll be sure to share those as well. But for now, we're looking at the television from the heart of autumn, almost 50 years ago, airing November 21st, 1974, The Rockford Files Season 1, Episode 8, Find Me If You Can. Brief summary. Barbara Kelbaker, played by guest star Joan Van Ark, hires Rockford to see if he can manage to find her. It does not take Rockford long to figure out she is scared and is using him to test if someone can find her, and she definitely does not want them to succeed. Digging deeper, Jim discovers she's on the run from a former boyfriend, Ralph Correll, played by guest star Paul Michael Glazer. Correll runs a trucking firm, but also has a reputation for tough dealing and Barbara witnessed Carell killing a man. This is Jim Rockford. At the tone, leave your name and message. I'll get back to you. This is the blood bank. If you don't have malaria, hepatitis, or TB, we'd like to have a pint of your blood. Who is? I'll go ahead and briefly touch on the guest stars. Joan Van Ark appears first in the top of show guest credits, but her name is spelled A-R-C instead of A-R-K. It seems odd to be listed top of show but misspelled. I thought maybe this was early in her career and she or her management was trying something with her name, but she'd been working stage and screen for over 10 years at this point, so it looks like it could have been a legitimate error that made it all the way to broadcast. Anyway, she was about four years out from her breakthrough television role as Valene Ewing, first on Dallas, but then for 13 years on its spin-off, Knott's Landing. Paul Michael Glazer was only a year away from his premiere as Dave Starsky on the hit cop show Starsky and Hutch. Still coming at some point in this category will be the biggies, Mike Post, Stephen J. Cannell, and James Garner, but once those three are done, we'll mostly be back down to guest stars with the occasional recurring cast member, I'd imagine. The Totally 70s Category. Okay, this one will be short this time because it's pretty obvious and not purely 70s, but I just wanted to say, payphones, payphones, payphones. Artifactoids. I'm not clear on the establishing exterior shot of Denver office buildings just before Rockford tries to meet with Carell. My lovely wife, Darcy, grew up a mile or so from Stapleton Airport, and she confirmed the terminal building stock footage to be authentic, but found the generic office buildings difficult to identify. This was about a decade before the iconic Norwest Center cash register building would be completed, so there's a decent chance this set of buildings was filed under stock footage, cityscape. What worked in this episode? I appreciated that the story was advanced by Rockford not following instructions and digging into the facts when he was only supposed to be seeing if he could find Barbara. I liked Glazer as the heavy. I haven't really seen him act much, and he made a good impression as a bad guy. What didn't work? I generally found Barbara to be a damsel in distress, but not much more. Van Ark did okay in the role. It was just the writing that let the character down. Of course, it is continuing to build Rockford's reputation as a sucker for a damsel in distress. I also am getting a little bit tired of Rocky telling Jim to get out of the business. I understand it's a bit for his character, but I'd like to see more interaction between them than just the protective father trying to get his kid in a safer line of work. Hopefully somewhere in the six seasons they decide to reduce the frequency of this character trait and give Rocky some extra dimension. So next time, we'll be looking at Season 1, Episode 9, In Pursuit of Carol Thorne. Happy hunting! You have been listening to the One Idiot's Thoughts on podcast, produced by Paul Mackey in association with QuadrupleZ.com. Theme music is Too Good by Jack Mangan and is used by permission from him. If you would like to hear other podcasts by me, you might try The Ghostlight Podcast, a completed intro cast about the TV series Slings and Arrows. 
or IdgitCast, an intro cast for the TV series Supernatural. Both can be found on fine podcasting listening software everywhere or at quadruplez.com. So random beach dog from the top of show credits doesn't get a call back? It would have been easy just to have Rocky say he had to throw out the spare ribs because a dog was chewing on them.